I'm here with the legendary Eilberg family. You have had uh, one demonstration today at Your Horse Live. How did that go? Yes, we, uh, we brought some uh, um, horses that we haven't actually been out a lot and especially the, the stallion that we uh, showed. We were a bit sort of uh, thinking how is he going to cope but it all went really well and it's interesting to see for the people what it's like when horses are a bit um, a little bit you know thrown in the deep end and having to yeah. cope and you know because a lot of people have those sort of problems so I feel you know it's, it's interesting to see what to do when it's actually tricky and not uh, just sort of happening by itself. Yeah, no, it's great. I heard there was a little bit of spooking going on. Was that by your horse, Michael? I think both of ours a little bit. Yeah, oh, were they you know, both? Yeah, yeah. It's quite, you know, it's a little different atmosphere in there. That you know, the crowds are very close, and everybody was settling into their seats when we came in. So there was a little bit of noise, yeah. and um, you know, th there's nowhere to warm up other than when yes, you're so in there. So them, you know, you yeah. get on their back, and they're a little fresh. But yeah, they yeah. they perform really well, and they did exactly what we wanted to show. So it was good. Perfect, and they cope with the indoor environment quite well. I think it was also good that they had each other. I don't think yeah. mine would have gone very far by himself. <laughs> so yeah, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great element uh, that you know there. I heard a herd animal, and uh, we had a question earlier from somebody there in the in the audience uh, saying that you know the horse always changes when it goes into the arena, and it is that it's that syndrome that you know the horses have to learn to rely on you as their true partner in giving them back up in confidence, so that they will cope when they're on their yeah. own. Yeah, yeah. And Ferdy, you must be so proud of your children. What does it mean to you with their achievements in the Dressage Well, it's, world? it's um, you know it's been a bit of a roller coaster really because uh, you know I obviously was uh, heavily involved in the sport myself, and then Maria sort of starting from ponies through to seniors was a was an amazing achievement, and uh, Michael then coming from the jumping and and catching up as fast as he's done with, with all of us <laughs> uh, that is just amazing, yeah. Maria, have you got any up-and-coming prospects in your horses at the moment? My horses, I've, yeah, I've got the couple, um, Woodlander Rockstar and Royal Concert. Um, very hopeful for those two aiming for Rio. Um, I had hoped the Woodlander Rockstar has come on quite a lot this year. Um, we, we dabbled a little bit with the Grand Prix, but um, he needs to still build up a bit over the winter. He, he did very well winning the Inter 2 Championship yeah. um, at the Nationals. Um, which was great for his CV um, and Royal Concert is still approaching small tours so um, yeah hopefully Woodlander Rockstar Grand Prix next year the big tour and Royal Concert small tour. The other tour. one in the wings yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah great something to look out for. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And Michael obviously Farouche isn't here today. No. Um, what plans do you have for her? For Farouche um, she's going to probably come out next year and do uh, you know a few competitions small tour um, she's sort of learning a bit of everything at home at the moment. You know, we're just finding out, you know, a little bit of um, where you know where her talents lie and how we need to go about training her. Um, and you know, she's she's coming on fantastic, and it's a, it's a real special horse to have the ride on. So we, yeah, we're looking, yeah. yeah, incredibly exciting um, to have her, and we hope to to train her on now small tour and then hopefully big tour for, for again Rio is a possibility yeah great um, so what advice would you give to someone that's wanting to come into the dressage world how, how would they do that well I think you know you, you learn ought from him <laughs> learn from the master <laughs> you, you, ought, you ought to look uh, you know these days you have to look for a, a good, a good enough material uh, because the horses are so good out there now uh, that three good paces are really uh, uh, almost a necessity now. Yeah. Uh, that combined with the, with the right training, and we you know we, we uh, take a bit of time here to demonstrate the the you know importance of the early training between four and six is yeah. very important uh, uh, stone to lay mm -hmm. um, for the for the training for the future. If they're naturally talented and you've done your basic work well, yeah. uh, you you should have the good chance to to get there and. Um, you know that that I think is uh, is the thing I would uh, point out most is that you know to look for a, a good enough material in in gates and temperament, uh, and then go about it in the right way that the basics are in place. Yeah. Then anything can happen from there. Can go all the way. <laughs> but one last question. It's coming up to Christmas. Anything on your Christmas wish list? Mm -hmm. You've got quite a few projects you're doing. Well, you? I'm, I've always got projects, but you know my. My uh, uh, feeling for the from the horses' point of view is that you know we have so many talented horses at the moment, and yeah. uh, you know the biggest wish uh, I have is that they all stay healthy and well. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for talking to us.